and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. If you've been following our tutorials from the start, you'll remember that we had a few lights out when we did our initial inspection, one of those being the number plate lamp. Well here it is, it's lost its earth because of the corrosion, so we fitted a new one here. It's not rocket science, just remember that the base plate is an earth. So if you get the wires the wrong way round and you have live onto the base plate, it will short circuit and blow the fuses for the side lights. The stop lamp that was inoperative actually turned out to be a loose bulb, it wasn't seating properly in the bulb holder. The side repeater lamp, which happened to be an intermittent fault on both sides, was dodgy contacts. It was a matter of cleaning the contacts and squeezing them together slightly so the bulb would fit in properly again. This is an issue with capless bulbs, however everything was working and they're still working now. It didn't take much for us to decide to fit LED lamps into the vehicle that are in keeping with the traditional shape and you can see the LEDs here. LED technology has come a long way and you can see the brightness of the bulbs themselves. They are absolutely brilliant. Compared to a normal light bulb with a filament where you have more contacts, you are going to have corrosion within the contact area of the bulb and well with the connectors as well this can't be helped because water actually gets in there i'm not saying there's anything wrong with the normal light bulb but the units themselves can take a lot of water in with any type of electrical component that's near the elements water will always win in the end anyway we've bit the bullet and ordered a load of leds that we're going to fit to the vehicle not rocket science to fit them the LEDs are y pack supplied by Bearmark. I'll put the part numbers up at the end of the video. The lamp assemblies are much better for combating water ingress and of course it has a defender plug on there which you can either use or cut off. What you need to be aware that some LED units are polarity conscious which means you can only put them around one way. Um, if you wire them up the other way they might not work so you take note maybe snip the connector off or change the wires in the plug. Very easy to fit, in fact I'm not going to show you how to do it, but just be aware you can see the rate the indicators are flashing at the moment. This is because of the relay that's fitted as standard with light bulbs. It's voltage sensed and it knows when a light bulb's out, but if there's not enough voltage provided it will go crazy. When fitting LED indicators you need a different relay. Now, this one is adjustable. So it's going to bring your indicators back to the normal flashing rate, which is 80 to 120 beats per minute, which is the recommended standards. So what we're doing is we're whipping out the old indicators, held on by screws. Well, you know that anyway, you've changed light bulbs, haven't you? All the good plugs, I'm using a little bit of battery uh, terminal grease to uh, make sure that the water is not going to get into there too quickly and make a good contact. These are direct push fits. Now, if the indicator flashes, that's fine. If they don't flash, then the polarity is wrong and you need to change the wires in the lamp. Okay. Now you see the flashing rate here is right. The only problem you may possibly find is connectors that are corroded and not usable. Just take a note of these wires. We have green with a red tracer and black for earth. Okay, so that will give you an indication of the circuit for the lighting and the tracer which indicates that it is a near side indicator bulb. Right, well I'm going to cut these, strip these and put heat shrink connectors in for the moment until we can get some proper connectors. Leaving plenty of wire so we can repair it again as required. If you decide that you're going to remove your plugs and not replace them, then heat shrinks are a good option for repairing wires. These are sealed and they'll stop water ingress for a longer period than perhaps the blue terminals will. Okay, so we've got the last of the lamps fitted and I've left the four-way flashes on so I know that all of them are working before I go and change the relay. The relay looks like this and it'll tell you it's a flasher unit. However, if you have trouble finding it, what you can do is just put your four ways on and hold a relay and it will be clicking. That is your indicator relay. Okay, so I'll pull that out and I will push the new relay into place. So you can't get it wrong. 
and you have an adjuster on here which to be honest with you made no difference whatsoever I'd advise you check your hazard lamps operation and you'll see that it should be indicating only on the trailer signal that tells you your four ways are working I'd advise strongly that you also check your indicators left and right make sure they're right and it should show up on the dashboard like this okay so there we have it we have LED lamps working the last thing I'll tell you is make sure that with the bracket that you put the spacer back behind the bolt when you fit the fuse board and the relay board back on the vehicle this is just to make sure that you don't crush the wires up against the bulkhead and cause shorts or push the wiring where it shouldn't go okay so that's it and like I said it's not rocket science to fit these LED lights and they look very good at night and they're a lot more prominent than just the light bulb which can fail <laughs>